Okay, welcome everybody. This is the second lesson about Android and today we will continue to develop some simple examples, some simple Android applications. Uh, starting from the simple calculator we started in the last lesson. So in the last lesson we started to design uh, this simple application. So this is a very simple calculator where the user can insert two numbers okay and perform some simple uh, operations plus and the result text field uh, display display the result okay now we would like to add some logic to the other buttons so this one this one and this one and uh, if you look at the original application that i have already installed in my phone we would like also to insert a new button for opening a new activity with my information. Okay, good. So let's go back to Android Studio. And as usual, we started to design our activity from the XML file. So we started to design the user interface of the, of the application and to place elements inside a user interface we need some special uh, widgets uh, some special container widgets that are named layouts there are many types of layouts such as relative layouts, linear layout, uh, constraint layout and so on we started to use uh, the linear layout one and so we put a vertical external linear layout that contains many different uh, horizontal linear layout and each horizontal linear layout actually contains uh, some widgets so the first linear layout models the first line of the user interface with the label okay let me change the language of the phone to english so the first linear layout contains the first line of the design so this label insert number one and the edit widget for the first input of the user and so on okay good so now let's go back to the java class here there was an error uh, because as i was trying to use a uh, an int value inside the set text function but the set text function needs a, a string so with this function to string of the integer java class we can cast the integer to a string okay good uh, and now we need to add some logic also to the other buttons so button minus button times button division and so on okay um, and so I can define many different uh, on click listener so for the button minus I can set an on click listener new on click listener so um, the on click li listener will be the event associated to the tapping event of the button okay so whenever the user tap the minus button this method will be executed so here the code is quite similar to the one of the button plus so I can just copy and pass the code and change the operation okay and so I can do the same for the button times set on click listener new on click listener good and I can also copy and pass the code okay I change the operation and finally we have the button division new on click listener 
Okay, I copy and pass the code. Okay, good. So now we have four buttons, and each button have as a, a listener, a non-click listener. Uh, so let's try the application. Run, run app. I select my phone. Okay, now the application is installed. Okay, I can open my phone and I can open the wonderful calculator app. Okay, there is an error, maybe. So let's go back to Android and let's see what happened. So here. Let me try to open the application again. Okay, there is an exception. It is um, a null pointer. Yeah, of course, because I forgot to get the reference to the widgets. Because now I have the variables, but such variables are not attached with any layout elements. So I need to get the reference to the layout widgets uh, so button minus is equals to find view by id r dot id dot button minus okay and sorry button times is equals to find view by id r dot id dot button times and button division is equals to find view by id r dot id dot button division okay so here the process is that we use the standard function this is a standard method to get the reference to a layout widget and to get such references we use the id of each widget because in the XML file, we uh, set an ID for each uh, widget uh, for which we need to get a reference. Okay, so we set an ID for uh, the first input edit widget, for the second one, for the four buttons. So, for example, this is the button minus, and uh, obviously also for the uh, result uh, widget okay good and now the application should work so let's try it run application okay good so let's go back to my phone here we are so let's try with two and one let's try with the minus button good it works with the times okay uh, with the multiplication sorry it's good and with the division okay good but now if I set zero in this field obviously the division will generate will generate an exception because we cannot uh, divide uh, by zero. So we need to add some more logic inside the on click listener of, of the division button. And uh, we can say that if the number two is equal to zero, here the operation is not allowed otherwise I can perform the division okay and uh, here if there is an error I can show a message to the user 
with a special uh, let's say mechanism in uh, Android uh, that are uh, toast notifications so mm, these are uh, notifications that will appear at the bottom of the screen so I can create a toast message that is equals to toast dot make text in this function I need to specify the application context that is accessible via this uh, function so what is the, the context in Android the context provides global information about the application environment and it allows access to application specific resources and classes and to execute activities, broadcasting and receiving, receiving intents and so on okay and uh, uh, I have also to specify obviously the message so wrong operation okay oh sorry operation division by zero okay obviously now I are coded the message here but I can also use the string files uh, string files are uh, uh, resources files uh, that contain uh, all the strings of our application okay so that if you need to modify something we can directly uh, act on these files and the strings file also allowed us to support multi-language in our application so now we have two uh, equals uh, string files that contains the same string but in two different languages and if I change the language in my phone the application automatically uh, uses the right uh, string files uh, the right string files sorry okay so let's go back now for the sake of simplicity I are coded the message here and I can also add the length of the notification that is uh, um, toast dot let's put length long okay and then for showing this message I can simply say message dot show okay so let's try the application run application my phone okay okay the application is installed so let's open my phone and now if I try to um, if I try a wrong operation okay so as you can see there is a notification at the bottom of the screen and uh, mm, the application doesn't generate an exception okay and if I put one okay the result shows the result text show the result of the operation good <coughs> now let's look at the original application so we would like to add an info button to open a new activity okay so let's go back in Android Studio and let's create a new activity so for creating an activity and also other components we can right click on the project folder new activity and here as usual we can select many different um, uh, activity templates but I will select uh, an empty activity here I can assign a name to the activity let's call it info activity this is the name of the XML file for the layout of the activity this is the package name okay Java language finish okay so Android Studio creates uh, two files 
the info activity Java class that will contain the logic of the activity, the Java code, and obviously the layout file of the activity, this one, and also Android Studio automatically insert the activity inside the manifest file, okay? The activity is a component, so it needs to be declared in some ways in the manifest file. And so now our application is composed of two components, and in particular two activities, the main activity and the info activity. Okay, good. So let me close some windows. Close all. So let's start with the design of the layout of the info activity, so let me open the XML file. Okay, so if we look at the original application, uh, we need, uh, let's say, three widgets, one by line. Okay, uh, a text uh, widget here for my name, uh, an image of myself and my, my information another text widget. So I will use a simple vertical linear layout to contain these three elements. Okay. And so let me change this con constraint layout into a linear layout so I can simply delete the constraint layout name and I can write linear layout. Okay. And I can also put the orientation of the layout to vertical. Okay, good. Now, I can add uh, the first text view field. Okay, I drag and drop it inside the linear layout. Good. And uh, here um, I can uh, set the text, so let's look for uh, text. I can R code my name because it doesn't change with the language, so Alberto Monge. Okay, good. I can increase the font size, so size, text size. Let's put 30. Okay, as you can see, I don't remember any um, widgets or attributes in Android Studio. I, I just simply use the search bar looking for some keywords. And let's try to put it bold. So let's look for bold. No. Let's look for text style. Okay, text style bold. And now I have to center the widget. So this is a text view. So I can use the text, sorry, the text alignment attribute, center, okay, good. Now I need an image, so I look for a image view, okay, I drag and drop it after the text view, and Android Studio, uh, ask me to uh, select an image but now I don't have uh, any images in my project so I need to take my image I already downloaded it here we are okay and I can copy my image and I can pass it inside obviously a resource folder because an image it's not an executable file and in particular images are stored in the drawable folder so I can put my image oh there was already an image so let me delete it okay I can put my image inside the drawable folder so past drawable folder this is the name of uh, the image okay Okay, now my image is inside my project and if I drag and drop the image view, 
I can select from drawable project my wonderful image. <laughs> okay. Pop. I can resize it. Good. Okay. I can center it. This is not a text widget, so uh, I have to use, uh, I think, uh, the layout gravity attribute. Okay. Center. Good. I can also add some margin. So let's look for margin. Lay on margin, all, let's put 20, okay, and finally, I can add another text view below the image, good, I can set the text, now I will use the string files, so let me define an info string in English oh there is already let, let me define again info hi I am Alberto and let me do the same for the Italian language so string name info Ciao, sono Alberto. Okay, and now from the XML file of the activity, I can set the text to of the widget to dot at strings. info okay I can increase the font size so text size 18 and I can center the widget so this is a text view so text alignment center okay good Here we are. So now if I change the language on my phone, uh, the application automatically change its language. Good. And now I need a button inside my original, my main activity to open the info activity. So let's go back to, sorry, the main activity. And let me add okay. Let me add another linear horizontal layout. Okay, not inside the last linear layout. Let me use the XML syntax. So I cut this layout from inside the other linear layout and I put it here okay good let's go back to the preview and now I will insert a button okay inside this last linear layout good let me add some margin from the top sorry Okay, let me change the text, let's say info, and obviously for this button we need an ID, okay, because we want to assign a listener from, from the code uh, to this button, so let's define an ID and let's put button info, okay, good. Now let's go back to the main activity Java class. Okay, I have already created a 
button variable for the button info so now let me get the reference to the widget so button info is equals to find view by id r dot id dot button info <coughs> good and now we would like to define a non click listener to on this button so new on click listener okay and here we would like to define the logic to open a new activity so as I already told you we cannot explicitly create a new component and a new activity of course um, so we need to use a special message that, that is an intent and uh, we need to send this intent this explicit intent to Android and Android will open the uh, the activity okay so now we are creating an explicit an explicit intent sorry to open uh, <coughs> a specific activity okay and to create an intent we need to use the intent class let's say intent equals to new intent and to create an explicit intent we need the context of the application so we use the get application context function and we need to specify the java class of the component we would like to invoke so in this case info activity dot uh, class okay good and then this intent is related to an activity so we can just use the function start activity intent to open the new activity okay very good so let's try the application run run application okay Okay, let me open the phone. The user can insert two numbers, can perform some operations. Okay, good. And if I click on the info button, I open the second activity. Okay with this very wonderful photo uh, and if I click back on my phone I go back on the main activity and vice versa okay good so now we can start <coughs> the second example of today and in particular we would like to develop a Bluetooth monitor to mirror let's say the Bluetooth setting of our phone so I have already installed the complete application so I can delete this one good okay so as you can see now the Bluetooth of my phone is uh, disabled and so uh, also my application have, uh, has this switch disabled and uh, if I click on this switch okay I just enable the Bluetooth of my phone and uh, the application shows some information about the Bluetooth so the device name and the Bluetooth address and if I click again on the switch, I simply disable uh, the Bluetooth, okay? But more important, I would like also to my application to react to the system events that are executed uh, whenever I tap the, the phone setting icon of the Bluetooth. So if I enable the Bluetooth from my phone settings, 
my application, I would like my, my application to react to such an event and to enable the switch and to show the information about the Bluetooth. And on the contrary, if I disable my Bluetooth from the phone settings, my application disable the switch. And so there is a broadcast receiver that listens for uh, Bluetooth system events, okay? And react to such events by performing some operation on the user interface. Okay, so this is an example to show you how broadcast receivers work. Okay, good. So let's start with uh, this project from scratch. So I create a new project. Let's call it Bluetooth Classroom, okay? Company dom domain, so ami.polito.it The location So let me create uh, a new folder Bluetooth Sorry, Classroom Okay, open the package name, it's okay. Next, Android 5 is good. So, next, here I can select uh, the template of uh, my main activity. As usual, I select uh, an empty activity. Next, the name of the main activity, main activity, it's good, and so I can finish okay now and the studio is processing my okay and the studio is processing my my project I can close the project about the calculator okay good Okay, so as usual, let's start with the design of the user interface. So let's start with the layout XML file. I can delete this label and let's look to the original application. So I need a switch component, a switch widget and one, two, three, four text views good and uh, so this time I will use uh, uh, a relative layout to show you how it works so I can change the constraint layout to a relative layout relative layout is a container in which you can specify the position of each element depending on the position of the other elements okay so I can put a switch as the first element of the linear layout okay good I need an ID for this widget because uh, I would like to define a listener on this uh, on the, this switch so let's call it switch Bluetooth okay I can uh, increase the font size so text text size let's put 18 I can change the text for the sake of simplicity I will record the text here okay and I can center the element so this is not a text uh, view so we cannot use text alignment we can use gravity center no gravity center no so let's look for layout 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 okay Layout 
center horizontal. Okay, so as you can see, each element has its own um, attribute to center uh, to center it on the screen. Okay, and let's add some margin. Okay, so now I need to place here uh, four text views one by line. So I will use a linear layout, vertical, and I will put it below the switch Bluetooth. And I can say that the linear layout has to be placed below okay the bluetooth switch okay so this is the characteristic of the relative layout i can define the position of uh, widgets depending on the position of the other widgets and in particular in this case of the switch bluetooth Okay, good. And then the eight is wrap content, and okay. And inside the vertical linear layout, I can place one, two, three, and four text views. So let's start with the first one. The first one is actually a label, so we don't need an ID. Um, we can put it in bold, so text style bold. We can increase the size to 18 and we can change the text. The first label is for the Bluetooth name and we can center it, so text alignment oh, sorry center okay then the second text views uh, is for displaying the bluetooth name so we need to fill this uh, text view via code so we need an id so let's call it text uh, name we don't need any text here because the text will be filled in by a code but we can center the, the element with text alignment center okay then we have the third text view that is uh, again a label so we don't need an ID but we can set the text style to bold we can increase the size to 18 we can change the text to bluetooth address and we can center the element center good and the last text view is again for displaying uh, a Bluetooth characteristic, uh, so the Bluetooth address. So we need an ID, text, address. We don't need the text. And we can center the widget. Center. Okay, good. Now we can go back to the Java code. So let me open the Java class of the main activity and I need some variables to model the widgets of my user interface. So we have the switch, Bluetooth, no, the Java convention, Bluetooth switch. And we have the two text views 
to to model the name of the phone and the address okay good and in the onCreate method this is the method that it's called when the application is when the activity has been created and the application is in the in an interactive let's say uh, in an interactive way and uh, we can get the reference to the widgets okay and so the bluetooth switch is equals to find view by id r dot id dot switch bluetooth good and the text view the text name sorry okay the text name is equals to find you by id r dot id dot text name and uh, the text address is equals to find you by id r dot id dot text address okay good now we would like to set our switch to an initial value so when we execute the application we would like that uh, the switch uh, we would like the switch to be coherent with the actual state of the Bluetooth so set the and so we can check the state the current state of the Bluetooth by using uh, the Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth adapter that is a Java class that let us to obtain a default adapter for our phone Bluetooth and here we can check if the Bluetooth is enabled okay and so now there is an error this is because we are trying to access uh, some hardware on our phone without declaring the permission, okay? So, as I already told you, for accessing hardware and sensitive data, we need to ask the permission in the manifest file, okay? So, we can open the manifest and to use the Bluetooth we need two permissions that are let me okay that are the bluetooth one and the bluetooth admin one okay so this tag the uses permission tag allow us to def to define the permissions in our manifest file so as you can see we can get permissions from for many different things such as the bluetooth but also notifications uh, access the uh, for accessing the wi-fi state uh, voicemail phone calls and so on okay save okay so now no errors and in particular here if the Bluetooth is enabled when we start the application we can set the Bluetooth switch to checked okay and you can set the text name with the name of our phone and we can get the name also from the adapter okay get name so the adapter provides us some useful methods to access information about the Bluetooth of our phone and we can set the text address dot set text okay 
otherwise if the Bluetooth here the Bluetooth is enabled and here the Bluetooth is disabled so here we can set the Bluetooth switch to false and we need to uh, set the visibility of uh, our result fields so of the information of the Bluetooth so I can simply uh, add an ID to this linear layout so let's call it lay uh, out sorry result okay and then I will set the visibility of the linear layout to uh, to make these widgets disappear okay so let's define a variable for the linear layout layout result and let me get the reference to this widget element so layout result is equals to find view by id r dot id dot layout result okay so here i can say that the layout result set visibility true uh, sorry visible okay and here i can simply set the visibility of the layout to gone okay good so let's try the application there is an error oh here good let's try the application okay So this is the first time we are trying to install the application. So Android Studio is, is really slow. We need to be patient. Okay, now it's installing the app. Okay. really really slow I don't know why okay let's continue with the application and then we will try again okay now we would like to define an on-click listener to the switch to directly enable and disable the Bluetooth uh, from our application and so we can we can define a listener for the Bluetooth switch okay dot set this is the a listener to monitor uh, some changes in the status of the switch so set on check change listener new on okay this one okay good and uh, here we can mm, check the value of this variable so if the switch is checked we need to turn the Bluetooth on otherwise we need to turn the Bluetooth off.
off okay and as usual we can access the Bluetooth with the Bluetooth adapter default adapter dot enable okay and here we can say Bluetooth adapter get default adapter dot disable and obviously if we enable the Bluetooth we need to also update our user interface with these lines of code and on the contrary if we disable the Bluetooth we need to copy and paste these lines okay good now we set the initial value of the Bluetooth when we run the application and we define a non-click listener to uh, enable or disable the Bluetooth from our application so let's try the application again on our phone okay so installing oh okay here we are so let's open my phone good now my Bluetooth is enabled so the switch is also enabled with the initial value and if I click the switch the application layout is updated and my Bluetooth is disabled okay and if I tap again on the switch I enable the Bluetooth of my phone okay and now we would like to also to react to these events this one and this one so that we can update our interface uh, whenever someone enable or disable the Bluetooth from the Bluetooth settings so we need a broadcast receiver okay so there are two ways of creating a broadcast receiver the first one is to right click on the project folder new and here ta, 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 other broadcast receiver okay I click here I can assign a name to my broadcast receiver so let's call it Bluetooth receiver okay and Android Studio automatically creates uh, the Java class associated to the receiver okay obviously the receiver doesn't have any user interface so we don't have any layout file and also Android Studio automatically insert the receiver component inside the oh sorry the manifest file okay and then here we can define some logic uh, to be executed when this, block, this broadcast receiver is, uh, is invoked and uh, now this receiver is really generic we need to spe specialize it with some intent filter to specify the fact that this receiver uh, it's related, uh, is related to Bluetooth events okay but the problem here is that from the broadcast receiver we would like to uh, update our user interface okay but unfortunately there are there is no an easy way to let's say uh, communicate between the broadcast receiver and the main activity because uh, we have two uh, separated Java classes okay two different Java classes okay and so there is another way to create a, a broadcast receiver uh, that is I don't create the Java class here so I delete it and I delete it also from the manifest file and I create the broadcast receiver directly inside the main activity Java class okay so here we can create our block broadcast receiver class
okay? A broadcast receiver is a Java class that extends the broadcast receiver class of Java, of Android, sorry. Mm -mm. Okay, there is an error because uh, I need to implement the onReceive method, good. And the difference now is that uh, the Bluetooth receiver class is inside the activity class, so I can access the activity components from the Bluetooth receiver class, okay? And obviously I need also to register this receiver, so now I don't use the manifest file, but I register the broadcast receiver directly via code from the onCreate method of the main activity. So I can say register receiver. So I create a new instance of my broadcast receiver equals to new Bluetooth receiver. Okay, and I can use. Uh, the register receiver function to register my broadcast receiver and I can also specify a list, uh, a list of intent filter to specialize this broadcast receiver and here I'm interested in a new intent filter about this event okay the change event of the Bluetooth of my phone, okay? So now I have a broadcast receiver that, uh, let's say, reacts to the system events about uh, some changes in the Bluetooth status and I registered this receiver via code and not via manifest with this function and okay, now the Bluetooth receiver is registered and uh, inside the onReceive method, so this method is executed when the status of the Bluetooth changes, okay? Here we can get the action of the event so this is a string that specifies the actual event of, uh, intercepted by the broadcast receiver and we can also get the state the current state of the bluetooth then dot get int extra bluetooth adapter dot extra state default value, okay, and so we can, to be sure, check the action string, so if action is equals to the action state changed event, now we can uh, check the Bluetooth state, so if the Bluetooth state is equals to Bluetooth adapter dot state on or state is equals to Bluetooth adapter dot state turning on. This means that the Bluetooth has been turned on. Okay. On the contrary if the state, sorry, is equals to off or state is equals to Bluetooth adapter dot off, sorry, turning off, this means that the Bluetooth 
as being the of okay and so inside the if and the else statements we can simply copy and paste the code so of the bluetooth so if the bluetooth has been turned on i set the bluetooth switch to uh, checked i set the visibility of the layout result to visible and uh, i fill the text name and the text address uh, widgets and on the contrary if the bluetooth has been turned off i set uh, the checkered state of the Bluetooth switch to false and I set the visibility of the layout result to gone. Okay, so now when our application is executed, we set the initial value of the Bluetooth depending on the current value, the current status of our Bluetooth on our phone. We have an on-click listener on the switch to enable and disable the Bluetooth directly via our application and we uh, register a broadcast receiver to mirror the status of our Bluetooth and to react to the events that are generated when uh, the Bluetooth is enabled or disabled from the phone settings. Okay, so let's try the application. Okay, let's go back to my phone, good, so now my Bluetooth is enabled, so my application shows some information about the Bluetooth, if I click here I can disable the Bluetooth, but more important if I click on the phone settings about the Bluetooth, the Bluetooth is enabled, and my application intercept this event with the broadcast receiver and it enable uh, the switch and it shows uh, the Bluetooth name and the Bluetooth address and if I disable the Bluetooth here okay so I think that for today is enough and uh, I will stop the registration here um, so thank you for your attention